Hey, what is up guys? Jay here from MJ Tech. Today coming with another motorcycle. This one is a tiny one. It is called the RPS Condor 150. I got it from TXPowerSports.com. Again, this company never disappoints. They deliver as I order. I got the gray color and uh, this is a very interesting bike because uh, it is, uh, well, in specs, it is a lot stronger than the Groms and it is a lot better than the boom vaders in every sense guys quality wise i've seen tons of videos out there and well i decided to include my own video to give you my own personal opinion here guys so as you can tell the box looks pretty good all the way around i've been trying to remove all of this plastic little by little and so this is the other side you can see that again the box doesn't appear to have uh, major damage except for the bottom there, it looks a little bit chewed up, maybe by rodents, we never know. And uh, wow, this thing is uh, in person. It is still a small bike, don't get me wrong, but it looks a little bit bigger in person. Now, the funny part about the RPS Condor is that on the front, this is a face actually. So you get your turn signals, those are like the ears. Then we get the forehead, the two eyes and the mouth. Uh, let's check on the size. These are 12 inch tires. This thing so far looks pretty awesome all the way around. We got a box here inside. We of course removed all of the wrapping around the bike. It looks like we had to lift it in order to get the suspension, uh, at least on the rear, to get the suspension on. And so we got inside of this box the mirrors. I think this is for the exhaust. Some tools. And these tools, I never use them. I just keep them inside of the uh, trunk so that in case something needs to be adjusted on the go we can now this is the shift lever so it comes already with a 10 millimeter uh, screw on there we had to hook this up as well and then it comes with some brackets i think some of these are for the front we will be get some screws spare screws and some covers okay and the mounts here for the handlebar we get the little spacer for the front wheel this is uh, this goes inside of the uh, the bearing in order to hook up the rear suspension you had to remove this screw it looks like a 14 millimeter the bolt is on the other side and this is where it gets hooked up there we go we have short time for this want to be as quick as possible because it is heavy I know that for sure. We get these cowlings and uh, I think this is for the front fender and this is a cover for the rear so that we can protect the chain and whatnot. Now with a size 14 wrench and you get a size 13 socket, we are ready to tighten up this screw like so. Our next step here is quite obvious. We had to install the front wheel into the bike. For this, we had to remove this big bolt that goes across it, and it is a size 14. Okay, now you gotta be careful because it might tilt over a little bit. There we go. This came with this uh, spacer. Inside here is where you will install the speedometer, like so. And then what you will do now is get the other spacer which is the metal one, and that goes towards the brake side, like this. Okay, now the caliper is open. I can see it right here, right now. And so now what I will do is gently put it through, and we got it. Check that out, guys. It went through, spin it, it spins freely. 
Let's grab this 17 millimeter nut that came with it. And now we got a 17 millimeter wrench. Put it in place. With the wheel installed, now we can do the handlebars. Keep in mind that these mounts, sometimes they come a little bit crooked. And so what you wanna do is first of all, make sure they're straight. And then with a size number six Allen socket, or this is not a number six, this is a number five, excuse me for that. Let's go ahead and confirm that here real quick. And yes, this is a number five. So you wanna make sure this is tight, first of all. Check both of them. And as you guys can tell, they like to move a little bit. Now with some pliers, you go ahead and get them back straight on here. And now we are ready to mount here the handlebar. Let's go ahead and unwrap it real quick. Now with a size number five uh, Allen socket, you want to go ahead and install these brackets. Make sure that you have a helping hand. There we go. So yes guys, my apologies for that noise that you guys are hearing. We have roofers here putting everything brand new for us and well, that's the noise you're hearing. So our next step here is to install here the clutch lever along with the buttons. Now I did notice that there's a piece right here that is missing for the choke. I tried looking for it all over the place but I can't find it guys. So I'm just gonna go ahead and proceed with it uh, the way it is. There we go, that was simple enough. I just wish that I can find that little piece missing. But there we go guys, we just got the buttons hooked up on here. That's perfect. Maybe a little lower. That's about right. This is the upper side. Now it is time to do our, uh, this is the shifter. So just put it around here like this. That should be good right there. If not, we can come back later to it and then get it readjusted if anything goes uh, not according to plan. Now we're gonna install the fender. Keep in mind that there's a bracket you have to hook up before you install the fender. It takes a eight millimeter bolt with a 10 millimeter nut on the other side, okay? Once you get this hooked up, now we can run it through like so. And you're going to continue this sequence all the way around until you get them all installed, guys. The rubber washer, that's so that vibration doesn't kick in and make uh, you know, noises. And uh, yeah, now we've got to install one here. I think the one here is a little different uh, to these other two. You're gonna find out in just a second. On this side, this little piece, metal piece that holds the speedometer cable in place, you have to insert it with a washer and an eight millimeter uh, screw, like the one you guys are seeing here right now. And then, there you go, that works. Now we move this little rubber piece around and we insert it in here. And now we can move it a little bit, and there we go. Now we do the muffler heat shield, and for this you have these two mounts in which they have rubber pieces on them, and they slide through here. Okay, so you're gonna have to somehow see what you're doing in order to get them in. And there you go. You got the heat shield on here. Rear fender for this, you're gonna have four uh, eight millimeter screws, and you might need a uh, eight millimeter key, a wrench, because it's really hard to get on here without it, guys. So as you can tell, we have a very tight space, at least on the muffler side. I just got this side. Now we just gotta get the other side, and then you will repeat this all around. You got two on the right and two on the left. Let's go ahead and pop the seat open. The key does feel nice and premium. There we go, it opens when you flick it to the right. And uh, there's the battery, guys. Very cool. These 10 millimeters are notorious for getting lost. 
we know that already. And I think that this terminal can go a little bit here towards the right, like so. And there we go. Yep, guys, we do have power on here. Let's see if it cranks up. Let's, of course, not forget about the mirrors. These simply screw on like this clockwise, and then you have a 14 millimeter nut to tighten up. There we go. We got the mirrors done, guys. She is ready to go, just about, guys. Let's go get that gas, that 10W40 quality oil, and we're gonna be right back. A great amount of people have recommended that you use non-synthetic oil when doing the break-in uh, part of it. So what I'm doing now is checking and see if we have sufficient oil to just get it started. And for this, you must have it standing upright like this. And it looks like we have a little bit of oil enough just to get it started, warmed up, and then replacing it. I'm going to show you here in just a second what I got so that way you guys can see what is recommended out there. This is a decent brand, what I just got. Not the best out there, but this is the 10W40 motorcycle four-stroke oil. Excellent for wet clutch protection, which is a must for these little engines. By the way guys, this is Octane 93. It is 100% recommended because these are high compression engines and Octane 93 works the best for them. Of course, it won't start unless we peel these off. In case you guys haven't noticed, it comes with a kick starter. This is amazing. I don't think the Grom does this. For the moment of truth, in this startup, we won't have a choke. I am not going to choke it and see what happens. We are in Florida, so the weather here is quite warm. Uh, let's try it out. Here's the reason it didn't start. There's a little valve in here. It was shut and also the line was disconnected. I had to connect the line, open the valve, and hopefully now it'll start. Almost. Let's go ahead and choke it. But let's do it with our hands. And let's see if there's any difference. There we go. First start ever, guys. Well guys, we finally got it to idle. It is because on these bikes, since they are carbureted and not fuel injected, it came with this Allen type of looking uh, tool and it has a hole in the center. Well, that's because this is dedicated for the carburetor. If you guys look underneath right there, there's a, a adjustment screw. That's for your idle and it comes quite low out of the factory. And I guess they do it so that it doesn't go overboard when you start the bike. So you have to adjust that. To replace the oil, all we need is a 17 millimeter socket. Go right underneath the engine. And there we go. And there it comes, guys. Look at all that junk inside of that oil. I can see the little metal particles. So that startup served as a rinsing. We still gotta give her a little bit of throttle the beginning but she's alive guys she's all set to go now we got to add uh, air to the tires we will check every single bolt make sure that everything is tight on here uh, we know that sometimes the quality control on these bikes can be questionable so we're gonna check every single bolt uh, of course we have here the uh, the lights as well let's go ahead and check the lights there we go the lights are on and that's the low beam and then we have the high beam with the passing lights. I'm assuming that's this right here. We get the horn. We have a dedicated light switch. This is the starter, the kill switch. And that's pretty much it, guys. Like I said, she's alive and just about ready to go after we check all of the screws. We will be right back. 
Here we are ready with the Condor. I got my buddy here with the uh, Z400 and uh, yeah we are testing the Condor 150 and there's a lot of great news that I will tell you guys about in just a second. Uh, first let me adjust here my camera a little bit more. I think that's about right. Well guys what can I tell you about the Condor 150? I can say so far that after updating the carburetor which I already did but of course you guys will see that most likely on the full review uh, reason is well this video is already quite long and the assembly alone took us about 15 minutes so we want to just you know give you guys an overview of what this is uh, it is for sure a very nice bike especially for learners uh, the seat height surprisingly on this one is about 31 inches 32 inches i think it is i did lower the suspension a little bit on the back because um i felt like like i was leaning forward it was just too too high up uh besides that guys i uh i haven't done you know many modifications i just did you know some of the basics uh this carburetor uh, which is the pz 27 it is not uh, modifiable meaning that you cannot uh, tune it or change you know jets you can't change the uh, the uh, position on the needle so I went on Amazon and I ordered another PZ27 that allows me to change those things so the carb that I got is a little different than the Nibi I know there's a lot of videos on YouTube about installing the Nibi but the problem I was having guys is that the Nibi, the we call the uh, idle screw was hitting the frame and for that reason I decided instead of modifying the Nibi I went with another PZ27 that I could uh, change those things that I mentioned and so I got it running perfect the needle on the new PZ27 that I got from Amazon is at the middle position. I have a 98 uh, jet on there, the main jet, and then I have a 42 pilot. And the air screw, I have it two turns out. It is geared quite short. So you have to make as much as you can from each one so that way you can keep up with traffic so far guys it is breaking in I only have 15 miles on the odometer and you know I don't want to kill it either I'm doing about 45 on fifth gear just so that the motor relaxes I could be on fourth gear right now but it's gonna be revving a little bit high so we're doing 50 miles an hour right now the cool part about this new PZ27 carb is that now the throttle doesn't play as much. It is a slightly different, I guess it is made by another company. The one that came stock was made by a company called Sheng Wei. Uh, this one doesn't even have a brand. So I don't know, it could be cheaper, but <laughs> hey, it's working better. So what can I say guys? I think I paid like $30 or 20 or 30, something like that. And it came with a filter that's another thing i did i eliminated the air box on it that thing uh, always restrict the bike on the amount of air that it can suck in one the uh, speedometer is quite balanced I know that sometimes uh, the GPS will show a different miles per hour but if you look it usually catches up but it still is a little off I think the bike shows like about three miles two miles and a half over uh, once the GPS catch on so right now the bike is saying I'm going 51 but the GPS says I'm doing 48 miles an hour Which is not bad. I mean, this is 150 cc's, guys. You can't, you can't do magic. And remember, we're not killing the bike. I'm pretty sure that if we do kill it, 
then it's gonna be uh, you know a little bit faster I think the top speed on these is like about 65 miles an hour that's uh, as much as you guys are gonna get here also guys you can change the colors right here ain't that cool and I am trying here a new microphone hopefully you guys can hear me in stereo mode and clear enough See, not too long ago, guys, I came from riding a 900. So you can imagine how I feel a little bit on the acceleration of this bike. Uh, it, it, you will notice a big difference, and well, we can't, we can't do anything about that, you know. But if you like bikes, uh, let's say you're an experienced rider and you like bikes that you can flick around and just learn new skills, I would say go with something like this. You know, you can, you can. Oh my God, you can dance with this thing and you won't feel like you know like you're stressed out about the weight or power um, and yes you can learn a lot of skills guys including wheelie see that's something i don't do yet because uh, well i gotta admit it you know I, i'm a little afraid of it uh but eventually i do want to learn it you know it's just another type of experience but i want to do it responsibly see i don't want to do it with a 500 650 700 900 whatever the case is I would rather start with a small cheap bike in case I drop it in which will most likely occur well I'd rather ruin this and not ruin a big bike I know it's not broken in but screw it Doing 60. Check that out, guys. Well, GPS says 57. Fifty-eight miles an hour. By the way, happy Fourth of July. For those of you here in the USA, today is Independence Day, guys. Great day to ride around here in Florida. We have excellent weather. Also, guys, please make sure you check all your bolts and nuts, every single one of them. I'm telling you everything, even the car mounts. Check your motor mounts. Check everything, guys. I found at least nine or ten screws that I could take off with my hand, including the brake sensor for the rear brake. Uh, it's kind of like a cylinder looking and then it has a spring on there now it does have a plastic nut so don't go too crazy on it but yes guys I uh, I saw a whole bunch of screws being uh, not not tightened on there so just just be careful and check your bike after all this is still a moving vehicle and if something comes loose while you're riding and it's something important you will get hurt guys I can't emphasize that enough Well guys, that will conclude today's unboxing, assembly, and first impressions of the Condor 150. I will be bringing a full review of this bike, including how I did those modifications to it. There's a, a few videos out there, Moto Cheese, he has a whole bunch of details. He even swapped the engine already to a 250cc. So there's a lot of great... Uh, support out there uh, for this particular bike again this was just the unboxing assembly and first impressions thank you for watching subscribe for more and i'll see you guys on my next one a few moments later also guys check this out we did get a replacement for the little choke lever right here so everything is good now with that i had to contact texas power sports and they sent it immediately